Yeah, maybe. Not an issue, sir. Uh, I just start the record. Good. Yes. You please. can do. Yes. Now, is this visible? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. sure. So now I am requesting Tamija, ma'am, to kindly yeah, start. You can the have webinar. the skill council uh, screen, no? Hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Now we can start. Ma'am, uh, you're in mute, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this next series of uh, our, our next uh, topic of our series. This is a seven, 77th series. And today, you know, this we are, as I've been telling you earlier, we have been, we are celebrating this as a part of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa. Uh, this is a festival which is, uh, you know, um, commem commemorating the contribution of our people who have contributed to the growth of India. It is dedicated to people who have made a significant contribution to the country's evolution up to this point and to those who are actively working to India Vision 2. This is this Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav is a government initiated program that will last for 75 weeks and now we have crossed more than 75 numbers and we will continue till 15th August. And this will inculcate a sense of love, respect and pride towards our country and its rich tradition and culture. It is a global movement where everyone is participating and we at Skill Council are participating in the form of us, you know, in the form of a webinar series so that we can have interaction with different experts from different sectors. We are dealing with the sectors of waste, we are dealing with environment, we are dealing with sustainability, renewable energy. So these are the sectors where we are, you know, the Skill Council is working. And we have invited experts from all over these sectors. And we have learned a lot during this process. And I think our participants have also gained a lot of information and knowledge from these interactions. So as, as we have completed, or oh, this is the 77th, we have you know, many speakers and waste has been one of the most, you know, uh, important or significant topic where we have had many deliberations. Today, we are going to interact with a very learned speaker, Dr. Rao from IICT Hyderabad. I also had the opportunity of visiting this institute long time back and uh, when I was in MNRE. And I was very impressed by the developments and by the standards of, you know, the research which was being carried out there. And the topic is about high, you know, it is how you will integrate waste with societal benefit, waste management with societal benefit and sustainable development. So this is one of the areas SDGs is the talk. In fact, it is a tagline today, RS 17 SDGs. And every sector where we are working is linked to any one or two or three SDGs. In Skill Council also, we have come, we are covering almost all the SDGs and we are working there. And we are also trying to integrate these with the areas of our work. So with this, I would, uh, inv I would welcome you, Dr. Rao. I look forward being a microbiologist. I look forward to your, you know, <laughs> more interaction and more information on high rate biomethanation and what I read from your, you know, curriculum and what from your CV that you have really, you know, got a lot of accolad and awards in this sector and you are really taking it forward in a great way. And here in Skill Council, we are also trying to work we try on waste management. We have done a lot of trainings, but we have a lot of lot to go forward. You know, the trainings on compressed biogas or 
on C bio CNG, these are still to be taken forward. Maybe today we will learn more from your lecture, from your talk, and then we will ask you for more guidance. Once again, I welcome you, and I will now request Mr. P. V. Singh to kindly introduce. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for welcoming the speaker and uh, uh, audience. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'll welcome you all to the 77th series of the webinar. The Skill Council of Green Job is organizing a series of webinar to celebrate Ajadi Kamrit Mahosav as a part of India celebration of 75 years of independence. In this series, SCGJ is inviting eminent and learned speakers in different sectors on sustainable development, renewable energy, and waste management. So as to be deep in the understanding of recent development in these sectors. The first in the series was launched on 24th September 2021. Today we have Dr. Gangangani Rao, a very experienced, learned, and distinguished speaker who will be sharing his expertise and experience on implementation of engineering solution in, in the domain of waste management for sustainable development and social benefits. I would like to share his brief profile with all of you. Uh, Dr. Gangangani Rao is currently working as a chief scientist and head in the Department of Energy and Environment Engineering, CSIR IICT. Dr. Rao completed his MTech in Process Engineering and Design from Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. He obtained a postdoctoral degree in biofuels from University College of Cork, Ireland in 2008. Dr. Rao had ex extensively worked in the re area of high, high rate biomethanation and development anaerobic gas lift reactor. He has also worked effluent and gaseous emission resulted in the development in innovative technology. He has worked Indigenous indigenization of the UASB technology for waste disposal treatment of anaerobic wastewater development and commercialization of the AGR technology as well as the development and in implementation of accelerated anaerobic composting process from laboratory to land for the conversion of organic waste into soil nutrient. A remarkable achievement is the appraisal of the working of Baunepalli biogas plant in Secunderabad in Telangana by the Honorable Prime Minister of India in his Man Ki Baat in January 2021. In his personal career is the development of about 30 biogas plants across India based on the AGR technology that he has developed and patented. His technology are widely implemented in the state of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana and efforts are in line to promote technology de deployment by in India. He has also provided consultancy for many industrial projects, both national and international. Dr. Rao has three patents granted and the other two fields to his credit in addition to 64 research publication in Q1 and Q2 peer review scientific journals, 14 books chapters, six industry articles and numerous conference proceedings, invited talks, and so on. The awards and honor have come to him all the way. The long list includes CSIR, Technology Award, 
बी आर एस आई इंडस्ट्रियल मेडल अवार्ड्स आई आई सी टी टेक्नोलॉजी अवार्ड्स डी एस टी लॉक्ट लॉकीड मार्टिन अवार्ड्स हिंदुस्तान डोर ओलिवर अवार्ड्स स्कोच ऑर्डर ऑफ मेरिट अवार्ड्स एंड भारत रत्न सर यम विश्वेश्वरिया अवार्ड डॉक्टर राव आल्सो ऑनर्ड बाय ए फेलो बाय रेपुटेड एकेडमीज एंड इंस्टीट्यूशन सच एज इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग इंडिया तेलंगाना एकेडमी ऑफ साइंस ए पी एकेडमी ऑफ साइंस मेंबर ऑफ रॉयल सोसाइटी ऑफ केमिस्ट्री लंडन नाउ आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग डॉक्टर गंगांगनी राव टू स्टार्ट द प्रेजेंटेशन ओवर टू यू डॉक्टर राव या गुड मॉर्निंग टू सिंह साहब धर्म जी मैडम एंड अदर्स फ्रॉम द स्किल काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया really it's really i'm very very much delighted you know to the, give this lecture actually because of the reason that you no know, silk council is like you know government of india national wide this is uh, azad ka amrit mahotsav and this program they are organizing so it will go to the many audience actually so that you no know, they will be knowing about this technology that is very interesting actually so the outreach is very very high actually i am very much delighted so that my awareness, awareness can be increased and in addition to that uh, so it is organized under azad kamrut mahotsav 2022 so i sincerely thank all the organizers of uh, skill council uh, for green jobs and uh, thanks for giving this opportunity i hope i think uh, i'll finish uh, mostly in 45 minutes that and then so today my topic of uh, presentation is implementation of engineering solutions in the domain of waste management for sustainable development and societal benefit next slide please next slide slide change i need yeah see all of you are aware that you no know, the waste in different forms it is generated solid form liquid form and gaseous form in general we are not like you know caring about this uh, scientific disposal of this waste because it is no one's job like that for example in long back like you know 5 6 years back actually i have seen in the amirpet area in hyderabad actually people actually became very alarming because one of the industry nearby emitted lot of emissions because of that smell no people could no, could not breathe properly and got suffocated a tremendous uh, like no uh, noise is created in that area and instead it came in newspaper then when we understood what is that actually then one of the industry is emitting actually volatile organic compounds in the form of gaseous compounds and these are creating harm to the that is suddenly it came to more actually that's why the people became panic in fact actually most of the industrial area if you look, measure this uh, water emissions you no know, harmful gases emissions you no know, they are the well above the threshold limit we did that exercise in hyderabad in fact actually and well above the threshold limit and so very slow like a poison we are everybody is getting affected we are in, uh, near uh, nearly living in the 10 km periphery of that area no who are living in that area it is their health is getting affected because of health no so much of money we have to spend and government of india has to spend so much of money individually we have to spend so much of money actually so that is an indirect uh, cause people are telling that no what is the problem with the waste is not treated properly but if the waste is not treated so many indirect uh, harmful effects like this actually and for example greenhouse gases of all of you are seeing you know we are in a very alarming situation the greenhouse gases are emitted to the atmosphere you know, because of uh, unscientific disposal of solid waste etc methane co2 and if they are going to the atmosphere and how the temperature is rising actually in fact so recently somebody started a clock that is clock green like you know greenhouse emission clock actually maybe next 5 50 years actually the situations are very alarming actually and i think that's why everybody has to take care 
if solid waste or liquid waste is disposed to the land without any proper treatment norms actually it could spoil entire this water bodies and all the aquatic uh, life is uh, get damaged and all our drinking water gets damaged uh, like you know ground water also gets damaged and ultimately you know with no living environment where it is not sustainable at all actually the living will be like you know become very harmful and people like you know so much money everything will be there without health what we can do all these things actually what the nation can do without the good health so good health is the prerequisite for everybody to work hard and prosper and all these things the country also the nation also is very important and in that contrast actually the treatment of liquid solid waste and disposal appropriately scientifically is very very essential i'll try to some of the like you know ways we try to address and uh, and uh, some solutions what we have provided across india for uh, all these type of waste like liquid solid and gaseous emissions no i'll try to just elaborate it is maybe a small effort in the whole game of waste management because in the very large quantity of waste is being generated it is a very broader context but what it may be maybe a very very small effort actually but uh, still it could it could pay way for no others to implement such solutions and so that national will get benefit and society will get benefit and will be in the uh, within the reach of sustainable development goals uh, promulgated by the united nations actually and government of india is also very very seriously looking at the sustainable development goals so in this content my lecture will go like this next slide please so earlier what everybody was doing you know it is like a linear economy whatever the resources are there we are manufacturing the different products required for the mankind and comfortable to the mankind it is a consumer society and we are consuming everything and waste is disposed but actually in the very recent past actually the modern new model is emerging that is sustainable circular economy model actually where in like you know waste can be reused purposefully in fact actually waste from one industry will become a raw material for another industry the so whole context it is becoming i'll simply i'll tell you one simple example very very good example actually so earlier all the refinery emissions you know they used to let out to the atmosphere and now from the emission, refinery people are making valuable products place like pani patno very big investment to the tune of 2500 crores is being invested by the iocl actually and for all the emissions they are producing is producing ethanol etc different valuable products actually so such is the level of changes uh, is happening actually in for example if you see plastics emitted from the society now so much of good efforts are going plastics to fuel and plastic to variety of like you know products like you know tiles so many things useful materials are being made actually so like that the model is changing from linear economy to circular economy which is very very important for the sustainable development of the society and betterment of the society and economic development of the society in line with the environmental management next slide please so first of all if you talk about solid waste no municipal solid waste generally what we are doing landfill that is the one option and uh, refuse derived fuel mass incineration biomethanation biomining these are the variety of options actually i have seen uh, in uh, delhi if you see like you know gazipur all the waste is shifted to gazipur from the delhi area and it's like it became like a, not like a waste it will become like a hill actually it is like a mountain now i have seen very very recently it is like a mountain need you not only in gazipur every city they are making the waste mountains these landfills are very unscientifically managed actually and unnecessarily waste is transported from one end to another end and filling landfill but in the cities you no know, metros and all these things this land cost is increasing availability of land is very very important and because of this land fills you no know, what is actually happening actually all the ground water is getting contaminated and people who are living around are facing a lot of uh, minis and all these things are happening that's why people government of india very stringently implemented uh, scientific disposal of waste and that bargain only even in the land fills also refused 
methyl pure they are making so that you know that RDF can be sold. And some people are doing some bimethylation. And the old animals are people are doing myo mining, and all these things are happening. And there is another technology has recently come up. Actually, maybe I think in the last seven eight years actually, that is called mass burning or mass incineration. If you look at like you know in Delhi there are two plants. One is by Ramke, another is by Jindal. And approximately twenty megawatt plants are there. So all these twenty megawatt plants generating like you know without any segregation. This municipal solid waste could be incinerated for generating from using the gated boiler setup. Actually, I have seen both the plants in Ramke and Jindal actually, and they are working. Huge investments are made actually, but unfortunately, this uh, the problem with this technology is that if the gas, what are they emitted from this uh, boilers are not scrubbed properly, it could emit uh, this dioxin and other and other toxic gases to the atmosphere. there but these are all carcinogenic and people who are living around get affected very badly so that is the scenario and that's why people again went to the public investigation so part plants are partially sometimes closed again opened all these things and people are showing not showing any further interest actually so these are all hal happening actually and in the recently in hyderabad also visakhapatnam tirupati vijayawada also three more plants are jindal installed actually these are all the properly operated they are very very good actually there is no doubt about actually but operation is very 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 critical so that no no emissions are coming from these plants it only energy is derived actually so that's it in the world like you know world landfill sites people are doing bio mining actually that is also good so that you know the my this all landfills can be cleared and made it like you know usable land actually next slide please and in this context what government of india has done in 2000 2000 actually 16 actually solid solid waste management rules 2016 they made no they told that the source segregation of waste has been mandated to channel the channelize the waste to wealth by recover reuse and recycle and all the biodegradable waste organic fresh stuff mhs should be processed treated at uh, disposed through either composting or biomethanation within the same premises as far as possible they cannot let out and this rule became very stringent in some cities for example uh, you can see bangalore so many apartments and so many hotels restaurants are given notices actually and to be frank actually these rules some people took very seriously for example city like indore they have done excellently well and uh, they are doing proper segregation at each ward level apartment level and everything and they are segregating and a segregated waste is transported to different biogas plants now today we have got uh, world's largest uh, organic fraction of msw based uh, cbg plant in uh, indoor for generating approximately 80 tons of 18 tons of cbg apart from organic fraction they are also recycling all the plastic and other waste and they are even for the construction waste also they are processing and reusing it actually for excellent waste management model in city they are they are doing it in indoor so why only in indoor why can't we do it in other cities also that is a very very big question mark actually so to be frank actually we have to everybody has to take that model and in other cities also like hyderabad and some places like you know, chennai also now they are very 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 careful about this and everybody insisting on source segregation and source treatment actually so which is very very important next slide please so now i'll talk about to decentralized waste management for example if the waste is segregated for example you have got one restaurant approximately let us say some 500 kg of waste is generated what can be done in a decentralized fashion that is the one case study i'll explain you next slide so now this organic waste treatment all of you are very much aware that you know so we have got this uh, biogas technology this is used to be called people will call villages like you know gobar gas gobar gas plants are there so there are two models a fixed dome model and a floating dome model these biogas plants and the seven actually i can say almini and digesters are working in india and some of them are also failed abandoned all these things because you know it is very simple design even a mason can construct and it is low cost also very very low cost we can construct it is not well engineered but despite the fact that you know intelligent people get it repaired and do it even in fact ministry of new and renewable energy also created teams to for the repairing of all these things they are working very good programs actually 
so but uh, there are some rigid vents like choking and all these things there is no mucking poor biogas quality and all these things but the same technology cannot be used for uh, all wastes we need to design a proper digester for this waste and in this context actually uh, and uh, waste characteristics plays very very big role actually and quantity also these biogas gobar gas plants are meant for 50 100 kg 200 kg like that for gobar gobar but if you want to treat 10 tons 20 tons 50 tons these designs are not uh, suitable so in that context what to do we'll see next slide please so if you look at this european countries no they got very very good technology like you know it is called iride biomethanation technology and in fact actually many of the places their segregation process is also very very good Segregated waste generating biogas, the pipeline gas also they are giving. In fact, actually most of the European countries, some trains are also running using compressed biogas. Trains are running actually, and buses are very plenty. I have seen in several places buses are running using the CBG. So such a and most of the places power is also being generated for like you know feeding into the grid and local purpose, off grid utilization, etc. So very advanced way they are doing actually. Whereas we still ten years back we stuck to the Old classical this uh, gobar gas plants only. Next slide, please. So in this, uh, yeah, and there are so many companies who are working in this. And for example, Compa Gas, Olaga, Dranco, Perth, Agronian, Bima. So many companies actually in Europe who are doing actually the single patents. So they are operating globally. And in fact, actually Bima came to India and tried to enter and uh, through UNDP program they did something. But uh, incidentally, it is not a very great success. Next slide, please. So, if you see left side, our digesters how they are looking actually, you can see very very like you no know, other right side. If you see the reactors are like you no know, how modern and all these things actually. So, it is very important. Ten years back we thought that you no, know, ten to fifteen years back we thought that you no know, transformation of our conventional digester to modern digester is very essential. In order to like you know implement this technology very aggressively in the country, so that you know, people will start taking the digestion design is good, economically viable, good. It occupies space, less space. Then people will show interest and implement. So that is the interest we had to create. So that became the backbone of our research around 15 years back. Next slide, please. And if you look at you no know, conventional digester versus iride digester, in conventional digesters, what is happening? Low volatile solids reduction, low methane yield, and hydraulic residence is very high, and organic loading residence is low, and whereas in iride digesters very low HRT, that means small volume of the digester for making higher uh, treating higher amounts of waste, and organic loadings are very high, high volatile solids reduction in the range of seventy to eighty percent, and high methane yield, and. For that, one more thing is also characteristics of the waste is also very very important for the design. For example, poultry litter having calcium cells, sand grit, low CBN ratio, whereas food waste is having very high C, uh, high CBN ratio, and sizes are also varying. Rapid acidification is the pH dropping, and rapid acidification is the biggest problem in food waste actually. And what are the digester design parameters? Mixing is important, temperature is important, CBN ratio is important, pH. Buffering capacity, and there are four stages involved in the reaction: how to stage and phase it, these things, and how to maintain the concentration of solids. What concentration of solids we have to feed actually? How to uh, remove the like you no know, digested solids, and uh, food to microorganism ratio. How to maintain all these things are very complex metrics actually. So if you can understand this complex uh, well and comprehend, no, then we can develop the higher digester. That is the what thought process went on. Or man back home maybe ten to fifteen years back. Yes, slide please. So with the idea, we developed a self-fueling centrifugal digester mm -hmm. having two compartments actually. When the reactor is fed with uh, this uh, waste, no, the gas is generated, and the gas will create turbulence in the reactor because of this uh, bifurcation of two chambers in the reactor. We call it as a self-fueling centrifugal digester. And we have patented it in India and US and few city countries. And based on this, next slide, please. We have installed one plant at one of the poultry station in Hyderabad, actually. 
next slide please and that plant uh, for the treatment of 250 kg of polyurethane installed plant initial plant plant and that worked very well and uh, next and we have demonstrated that biogas can be used for many purpose for example in the poultry biogas used for uh, Also, biogas also biogas guns also demonstrated whatever the applications of lpg we have demonstrated biogas actually and we handled and we compared the performance on to in the conventional diester smart smell mix and rubber diester and it found to be very very good very high like for example hr has been drastically reduced to 18 to 24 days instead of 40 to 50 days biogas yield improved greatly two times volume has been reduced BS reduction improved greatly. All these things. Next slide, please. So this is the internal part. How it looks like and all these things. And we have become a competitor. In fact, actually, like a digester, like European digester, we have designed, and it worked very well. That is the great challenge which we have overcome in two thousand seven, something like that, seven, something like that. Next slide. yeah and after the success of that plant we have seen some drawbacks again and we improved the digester design very drastically and we developed another technology called anaerobic gas lift reactor that is the agr technology and again we have patented it textile this technology and after what all the improvements we made you now we incorporated and we designed approximately 1 ton of poultry litter plant in place called thopran in hyderabad and after doing this actually we extensively studied not only poultry litter napier grass and market vegetable waste food waste press mud and variety of substrates we studied and different variety pre treatment post treatment process also we understood and direct uh, react design also we understood thoroughly and the interesting features of this reactors are advanced digest design smaller digester volume easier to scale up and multiplication Semi automatic plant operation, higher biogas yield, generation of organic fertilizer, local available enriched microbial consortia, remunerative for presentation application, distributive biogas plant at waste generation, sir, use of byproduct will make the plant sustainable and employment generation. With all these so many benefits actually, so we started working this plant actually. We are developing two models. One is the horizontal model and vertical model. Horizontal model is generally given for lower capacities in the below 700 cc kg, something like that. And above 700 kg or 600 kg, we are giving a vertical model. And uh, next slide, please. And these are the models. What you can see, pretend number is also given. Next slide, please. And we are interestingly, when we are demonstrating this plan, no, we are trying to sell it in the poultry uh, sector initially, but we did not get breakthrough. because the most of the poultry waste in india is used as a manure back to the field actually even though it contains better than cannot be used directly like that because there are no norms in india for like you know european countries and like you know all on western countries they don't use directly because better than are there it cannot go to the soil like that but in india there are no certain norms actually people are generally farmers are using it and that is being sold in the range of 500 to 1000 rupees per ton actually several people are taking away that's why they are not shown very good interest in this area so then we have tried so many like you know bigger kitchens and uh, one of the interesting like you know akshay patra fund of question which is a very good ngo and in 2014 when we met them you no know, they are operating around 10 kitchens across india for like you know cooking mid day meal uh, to the children of school actually so one of the uh, place where we went is bellari it is in actually karnataka actually they are cooking almost 1 lakh uh, meal every day and they will supply that food they will start the cooking at 3 o'clock complete by 7:30 8 o'clock they will pack the food and the containers and the food packed food is uh, supplied to schools uh, around 50 kilometers periphery and uh, whatever the unutilized food they will bring back that is like a waste it becomes like a waste food food waste and while preparing the meal also they will get a lot of vegetable waste actually so vegetable is cutting it is a pure vegetarian food they serve actually so approximately when 1 lakh meal is actually happening actually prepared you no know, we are getting approximately 1000 kg of food waste 
it uh, consists of approximately 50% cooked food waste and 50% uncooked food waste actually. So that we have installed the plant, one ton plant for them actually. And in fact, actually we have guaranteed them only approximately 80 to 100 meter cube per ton of their waste based on the characteristics and our laboratory studies actually. And we installed actually, we after installing actually, some small uh, process related issues we faced, we addressed all the issues. Finally, initially they are reluctant to take the gas, but ultimately after seeing the quality of gas, quality of engineering arrangements we made for utilizing the gas, because when the gas they are using, you know, it should be utilized like a LPG only, then only they will use it. So, but biogas to use it like LPG, we need a lot of engineering uh, modification in terms of stove and supply mechanism, everything is required. All these experts we did, and they are very, very happy. And that is the first breakthrough we, what we got in 2014. And still that plant is working very, very well, actually. And based on that, actually, further approximately 12 plants, uh, this Akshapatra Foundation has given us for installation, that 12, in the range of around 500 to approximately 2 tons for waste, actually. The, this is the first plant. The latest plant is being constructed in Varanasi, Akshapatra Foundation, Varanasi. And another is that uh, near Faridabad, uh, one Amma hospital is coming. Amma, Amma Amrutanamani hospital is coming. That is 1000 bedded hospital. One more two tons plant is getting constructed. These are the latest actually. So, so far approximately we have installed 30 plants for different waste. For example, food waste, market vegetable waste, organic fraction of MSW, MSW, Luiche, poultry litter, and cattle manure, etc. So instead of actually we guaranteed only 80 to 90 meter cube, but actually there we are getting most of the food waste plants in Akshapatra we are getting for a ton approximately 140 to 150 meter cube, replacing 55 to 60 kg of LPG. In fact, their LPG consumption always became zero. Most of the places, LPG, all the places, LPG consumption became zero. Only food they cook using the rice boilers. So they will make brigading of the rice husk and that brigading boiler they use for making steam. From the steam rice they will cook. But rest of the items are being cooked using LPG only. So that is how the success to 2014 till now almost 30 plants for different waste as I told you. Next slide please. So these are the different models where we have installed actually. Our campus we have got one plant and like Nakshi Gujarat and Hubli and Ahmedabad like Bellari as I told you. And engineering colleges, so many engineering colleges on Cap Germany, Hyderabad campus, several plants we installed. Next slide, please. And this is the one plant where we installed this Jawarnagar uh, uh, landfill in uh, Hyderabad, actually, approximately every, every day, almost 5,000 tons of being uh, waste is being processed there. 5,000 tons, it is a municipal salt waste, and approximately that is a lot of segregation they are doing, a lot of leachate is generated. And um, and they are making RDF, they are making compost, so many like, you know, plastic they are recycling, metals they are recycling, very big processing center, waste processing center actually. There with the help of Indo-US Science and Technology Forum help, they funded the project actually. We installed a 5 ton plant, a 5 ton plant for the, uh, like, you know, 5 tons of uh, organic fraction of MSW and 5 tons of leachy, MSW leachy, around 5 to 6 scale of leachy we treated. And we are getting very good, got getting very good results. Continuously is being operated from almost to 2000, like I can say, so 15 to now, almost six to seven, eight years it is completed operation. They are using the power for operating their, uh, like, you no know, so many equipment. So off grid, they are using this power for utilization. And it is one of the best model what we have operated in this organic rest of MSW. And the entire story was actually written in by this UNDU Science and Technology Forum in their magazine, they cover and saying that one of the best innovations they have done in the recent past like that. Next slide, please. And another plant, what we have done is very interesting plant is that, so DVT government of India asked us whether this technology can be utilized for market and vegetable waste. Then we submitted a proposal for installation of the plants in Hyderabad, Telangana, and with the Association of Department of Agriculture Marketing, they have got approximately 10 market yards in each place, approximately 500 to 10 tons range of this waste is market vegetable waste is generated actually. And first plant we installed at one of the biggest uh, like you no know, market uh, yard that is actually Bonpalli. 
and you installed a 10 tons for the treatment of biogas plant for the uh, 10 tons per day of our market vegetable yield. There we have successfully installed this plant generating approximately 500, 450 to 500 meter cube biogas from 10 tons of market vegetable yield. And around 100 meter cube of gas is being used in the kitchen in the same uh, market yard for cooking food to the farmers and replacing approximately 40 kg of LPG. And balance 400 units, uh, 400 by meter cube we are generating new power. And the entire power off grid we are the market yard is utilizing for like you know, AC sheds, AC storage, and lights, everything, rooms, uh, lighting, everything they are using. And approximately conventionally, uh, off uh, grid through grid they are taking let us say 40 percent. Our plant is giving 60 percent. So 60 percent of their conventional electricity consumption has been reduced. And all the LPs have been reduced by our biogas intervention in this program. And uh, next slide, please. This is one of the interesting plant. A lot of awards also. Uh, we laurels we got. We got awards also. And Prime Minister of India, Honorable Vendra Modi ji, appreciated this innovation. You can just play that cl uh, clip. Uh, sing some. Play that. Sound is not coming. Voice, I cannot yes, listen sir. the voice. Uh, voice, yes. can you listen the voice? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not getting the voice. Are you listening? Rohit, voice nahi aa raha hai. Rohit. Okay, yes, sir. I am uh, hearing the voice. I don't know why it is not coming to you. Uh, mm, check first. Okay. Voice is coming from my end. Otherwise, we can play at the end. Otherwise, if you problem based, I'll send you the clip separately. You can play at the end if you want. Any problem? I think I cannot listen to the voice anyway. Sure. Uh, we can go ahead now, sir. Yeah, we will go ahead and you can put that clip. I'll send you again by mail. You can put it sure. at the end again if you want. Okay. Sure. 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 Yeah. Okay. Sir. And next slide, please. Yeah. Now, see, after 10 to 15 years, what we can confidently say is that we are actually till 15 years back, we are working with conventional digesters only. But now we become very self sufficient in terms of development of high rate digesters. And we are competent, in fact, actually to the European countries. A digester which is like looks like European digester, like that we are developed with in terms of performance and aesthetic looks, space occupation, and all these things we have done actually. And uh, generally in European countries, they are doing for higher quantities of waste. Whereas our digester is like you know, meant for even smaller, even when we are one place in Jorahat, in Assam, we are treating only 50 kg. And, uh, and as high as 10 tons per day. So that now we can do, now we are actually quoting for uh, uh, CBG compressor biogas plants to generate 5,000 meter cube of biogas minimum. So that is the level of range we can work in these digesters. So from uh, down uh, to 50 k to we can go to 100 tons also. That is the level of range flexibility we have developed actually to suit to the Indian conditions. Because Indian conditions are such that somewhere only 50 kg, somewhere 10 tons, somewhere 5 tons. So it should be, the technology should be very robust and adaptive. So with that only, I can confidently say we are in a very good position in terms of technology. Next slide, please. So what we are trying is that any waste from some kitchen can be treated using this biogas technology and whatever the biogas is generated can be go back to the chicken to replace LBG. Whatever the biomanure, you can grow vegetables and vegetables also can come back to kitchen. So waste energy from kitchen to kitchen 
that is the slogan we have under swachh bharat mission we have strongly promulgated in fact actually this catches the attention of so many people actually next and now future game plan is that already is happening actually government of india pro started a program called actually satat sustainable alternative transportation transportation model they have uh, started and in that uh, gorgan what they want to do is that instead of cng they want to use compressed biogas cbg it is called and we are almost importing the uh, compressed natural gas and which is costing actually almost not less than 50000 crores per annum imports we are costing actually so you slowly can be shift to the from cbg from cng and the cbg also can be used for variety of application for replacing lpg ldo lsgs so many fuels you can replace actually then country can save so much of money in terms of you know export import uh, this thing and not only that lot of waste what is available in india can be purposefully be utilized so that is the program government of india started a very good program called satat actually and all in this bargain all manufacturing companies are uh, taking the cbg in their bunks to replace cng and uh, by 2000 uh, maybe i think something like that uh, 2030 or something like that they want to put 5000 biogas cbg plants actually already around 40 35 to 40 plants are working across india different places actually and uh, there are 5 500 entrepreneurs showed interest and they are giving their expression of interest to uh, this oil manufacturing companies for installation of the plant so that is the demand is it is going very high but for that no what we have to do from the raw biogas we have to upgrade it to ch4 ch4 should be above 90% and moisture content should be zero hds should be and less than 20 ppm these are the some parameters for the utilization for like you know, cng cbg next slide please so purification compression bottling are very very important so this is the typical composition of biogas next slide please so that is uh, we have to make it to high standard highest standards are there for compressed biogas you can just google it and see and one more thing is very also business perspective actually biogas what fuel if it replacing that is also important if i am generating 1 meter cube biogas 1.5 kilowatt hours of electricity and uh, it can replace 0.4 kg biogas cng and 0.4 kg lpg the rate of sale if you see you know the value return is very high from the lpg so if i can use this biogas for lp replacement i'll get more revenue so this model also everybody has to think before deploying these plants very carefully so that's why wherever our decentralized 30 plants you know mostly as far as possible we are giving biogas for cooking to replace lp this so is the revenue is very good payback is also very good next slide please so these are the variety of technologies for biogas uh, CO2 removal and HDS removal from the biogas so that no, it can be upgraded to the compressed biogas standards. Next slide, please. And this is next uh, the flow sheet. Next slide, please. And uh, yes, I told we are doing also very good projects with uh, Gale India Limited, BPC India Limited for the like no uh, technology uh, a model and uh, I think again novel technology we are developing for this generation of uh, like you know compressed biogas from all these things, igno cellulose biogas. agriculture waste and different ways and like you know uh, both the projects are going very well shortly will be commercializing these tea technology which we already patented and developed actually and now satat program will become very active partners technology partners next slide please so these are the assessments made by administrative staff college of india about technology and one of the general waste management has independently written about technology saying that is the one of the game changing technologies in india for the waste management like that they have commented next slide please to different efforts you know, we got coverage in the newspapers and all these things next slide please next slide please yeah this is about the anaerobic gas limit treatment by gas generation but you know some places actually what is happening the biotechno biogas technology may not be sustainable So we have to look for some alternatives actually. So people, what they are doing composting, that is aerobic composting, they are doing. They are doing actually. But the issue with aerobic composting is it is giving a lot of smell actually. So that's why 
people started hating the technology and uh, so many people like you know villages and all they are utilizing but like you know urban setup and all very difficult to use the technology so uh, and that is one reason secondly some place for example most of these lakes uh, in places like bangalore hyderabad and all are filled with water hyacinth so when the uh, lakes are like you know spoiled like this because the lot of waste water and the sewage water is coming to the lakes without proper treatment and due to the process of eutrophication all these lakes uh, getting filled with this water hyacinth because the water hyacinth is aggressively growing there actually so water hyacinth uh, it is good from the perspective of absorbing uh, greenhouse gases but it is the pra- very bad uh, and it is good from the perspective of treating the water in the lake also but from the outside perspective the water like water hyacinth is growing in that lake no fish cannot grow because of high pollution concentrations and like you know low devo levels and people who are living around getting a lot of smell actually because our retting of this uh, water hyacinth during our course of period and all these things so people you know moment like for example hyderabad greater hyderabad municipal corporation spending approximately 500 to 1000 crores for cleaning up lakes in uh, hyderabad So in Bangalore, I can imagine there are fifty, sixty lakes in Bangalore. So many phone calls we are getting. So so much money is being spent for this lake cleaning. Is there an alternative? So then what we requested Greater Hyderabad Municipal Corporation. One of the lake we asked them to give the water hyacinth that the shore. That is also a big mechanical process, laborious process. And at the end, we made anaerobic composting pits actually, like you no know, closed, like it like anaerobic digest only. But we will not be taking out the biogas. We will be recycling back the biogas so that you know the manure is becoming more and enriched with this carbon, and that becomes a very good uh, nutrient soil conditioner actually. So from approximately twelve thousand tons of water hyacinth there one lake in Kapra in Hyderabad, we made around one hundred to one fifty tons of uh, soil conditioner, and one of the entrepreneur did this, invested himself uh, money, and now he sold approximately twenty rupees a kilo. and most of the manure is 90% so far it has been completely sold out and we went to the recently review meeting with farmers also we met several farmers who are using this actually they found very very happy yields are good there is no insect problems and all these things so several good feedback we got so that's why we are promoting this technology also and now government of telangana has actually one demonstration model we have showed in place called surya peta in one of the market vegetable yard Like you know, agriculture produce market, produce market yards will be there. So they have got around 50 in Telangana. One place we showed that you know, whatever the market waste is coming, agriculture waste is coming in the one place can be converted to the soil conditioner. And we installed with very five lakhs investment only. We installed a small plant, and two women are operating that plant. They are gen- uh, generating revenue of approximately 20 thousand rupees per month. and after like you know whatever the operational cost everything is there in uh, excluding that they are generating 20000 rupees per month both of them were earning like that and two women got employment and all the premises is clean they are doing very well so we have demonstrated one model last before year and based on the now government of telangana has given us uh, to implement the similar technology for 50 places and already some 25 places we completed and the next one year we will be completing by 31st march uh, 2024 will be completing all the 55 would like to operate and all the bio manure generated fermented organic manure generated at least will be sold by bought back by one agency to sell it back to the farmers actually so that is a very good arrangement uh, we are making actually and that is one of the good technology what is very cheap and better if the biogas people cannot afford no we can do this technology for organic waste this is one of my recommendation next slide please so these are the different characteristics we made and we made uh, leaves separately and uh, roots roots separately because you know this water hyacinth roots contain some toxic compounds heavy metals and all so the roots compost can be utilized for any mold like you know uh, for like in you know, a flower purpose and all this horticulture whereas the leaves compost can be used for anything even for food food growing also next slide please so this is what we did at that lake and all different operations next slide please car energy that is the company which has licensed it next slide please next slide please yeah this is how we made that compost next slide please and uh, uh, you can play also our lake you no know, we regenerated 
or drumming water i think no we have used floating aerators and uh, floating aerators completely we have one like kodikunta lake in hyderabad and uh, what the what also we did no on the at the shore we made one kapoche plank and where whenever the water rises come entering this no immediately they will take out and make that compost and uh, they will sell that compost like that also we made arrangement so that you no know, one uh, composting plant anaerobic accelerator composting plant is also available at the one of the each lakes like the three lakes we made actually we can play that video also next slide maybe yeah this slide next slide uh, this is how this lake kudukunta lake it is working next slide please next uh, this is the lake how it will be free ascent before about that you can see this how this uh, it has been changed and all this next slide please the another technology what i told this like you know industrial emissions are giving a lot of mall odors and they are toxic also and mostly this uh, industrial emissions contains ammonia hydrogen sulfide amine sulfur compounds aromatic hydrocarbons chlorines volatile metals etc you no know, most of the industry, like tannery chemical industry bulk drug industry polymers all of the people know they limit this actually we did some survey also like ammonia hds voc what is the range like you not know, 125 tannery 80 120 where the threshold limit is 25 10.5 to 1 So see how people are badly affected. Actually, for example, people who are working in tannery, how approximately hundred people working in one tannery, how they are badly affected. Actually, most of them like India, no, Kanpur area, Calcutta area, Chennai area. So many tanneries are there. So unless we do this, no, occupational health safety hazard management, no, people cannot live healthy life. So that is very important. Next slide, please. So under CSR program. government of india has our council of scientific has in uh, natural research has given a project asking us to develop a technology and even though there are chemical technologies and physiochemical technology available we have developed a biological method next biological method it is called biofilter next slide please and this is the biofilter setup we will be um, uh, like you know uh, biofilter will be filled with uh, agriculture waste or something like that very cheaper waste like you no know, easily available waste and we emulate the microbial consortia and the, from the bottom to top we will send the air contaminated air and the air is coming from the top no so all the uh, absorbents are uh, like you know toxic uh, compounds are degraded uh, degraded and finally we will get uh, water and uh, co2 only co2 is the atmosphere and water will be forming in the humidity in the biofilter bedding material which is also important for this uh, microbial consortia next slide please So these are the different compounds which can be even biofilter like benzene, sulfide, and toluenes, and all these things. Next slide, please. So this is what the like you know there is a drum yard section in one tanner in Yeroot. So that lot of smell, it is smell and ammonia smell. People cannot live just like that. If you enter now as a like you know uh, as a foreigner now enter now. You will feel like you know, but people who are working there, they are got habituated and they are guilty. They think then we installed one biofilter, three biofilters installed, and their water has become very, very, very minimal, and that is working for almost for the ten years. That is the biofilter is working. Next slide, please. So another work biofilter installed in Fleming Laboratory, see, in bulk drug industry here. That is also working very well. Yes. We have taken actually coconut carpet and all these things, very very cheap material for bedding material, and reusable also. After that uh, four five years, the entire material can be used as fresh material. This can be used as again soil conditioner. Next slide, please. Another technology for the waste water. What we have developed? No, bulk drug industry. Most of the people are generating bulk drug industry with like high ammonia, high nitrogen, and high chemical oxygen demand. So now presently, bulk drug industry is doing very very costly treatment. For example, what they will know high TDS, high CO2 effluents, they do multiple effect operation and alternate thin film dryer, and then followed by reverse osmosis and so many big operation units, very highly energy consuming actually to make it to the jet only because zero liquid discharge is the order of the day in all industries. So, but you no know, all industries, some people what they they will do they will discharge this effluent to the um, outside so the ammonia nitrogen is a big problem apart from cod that is why this eutrophication all the lights are getting spoiled because you no know, the ammonia ammonia nitrogen is more 
so eutrophication all the weeds will grow so cod is also very bad so that is how these problems are happening so that is why we developed a process called biosec process for the simultaneous removal of this ammonical nitrogen and uh, this cod and this is the complementary technology for the existing for example they are putting multiple effect operator and atfd technology and reverse osmosis all these things partially that they can replace this uh, atfd and uh, multiple effect operator put this biological system and again they will have reverse osmosis ro system for recycle of the water for condensate and all these things so that type of interventions we made with one of the biotech industry we closed to work at sms pharmaceuticals and uh, two more companies actually worked and dht has uh, given some funding for this project apart from this industry and we will develop this for now we are trying to commercialize this for 100 meter cube per day in place called kottavalasa near vijayanagaram in andhra pradesh next slide please so this is what this no nitrification yamuna river we have seen full of like you know foam that is how because of this ammonical nitrogen only i have taken the photographs from the yamuna river only near delhi Yes, trans next slide please and landfill leachate all these things can be treated using this technology next slide please it is a combination of strictly aerobic and anaerobic process this is a pilot plant what we have demonstrated to them actually industry and dst next slide please so one more technology what we have done actually it is integrated technology if any uh, like you know colonies are available they are generating let us say some amount of uh, Around 100 meter cube of uh, sea waste, and if they are generating 100 meter, 100 kg of solid waste, we can put actually this aerobic moving bed bioreactor, and all the waste water very really like you know low sea water waste water. These are like sea waste, no? That waste water can be recycled for the like again washing purposes or like you know for any other bathroom purposes and all these things. Whatever the solid waste, biological waste is coming, you can get to the biogas plant. The solid waste can be uh, segregated. Solid waste can be treated by gas plant. Those these things can be next. And this by gas can be given to the same in the same colony. We can give it to some people like you know watchmen all these things. Or we can put a small engine and generate power and connect also. Or nearby any small cantings we can give a line and use it. So the entire like you know now what is happening? Big big STPs and solid waste management plants we are we are uh, we are using. how to transport why to transport so much like distance and like you know we should wear localized decentralized fashion we have to make treatments so this is the one model again we demonstrate with the help of industry and the government department of science and technology now we are uh, promoting this and uh, some medical colleges in uh, hyderabad and like you know area they are showing lot of interest actually this took two plants we are almost will next time will by the time uh, I think one or two years we'll be installing around ten to fifteen plants. These plants, a lot of demand is there because there's a lot of mandatory requirements also there. Next slide, please. So there are some few cases I have seen in the I explained you in case of solid waste, liquid waste, and gaseous emissions actually. So beyond that, also some things we are doing actually for the limitation of time, like you no know, one hour and all these things. That is why I limited myself to some extents. Uh, so. what i think is that like you know there are some science solutions are available and if you engineer it now suitable to the indian conditions now that can be implemented ready made and our society can benefit immensely these are all very simple solutions small solutions and very good and a, like normal person i am a normal engineer basically i am not a great intelligent but we could be able to do it so 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 that means everybody can do it actually so that can be implemented but what we have to think is that what when we are doing any solution for any problem what is the globally what is the benchmarking we have to see and how to indigenize it for local requirements these thought process we have to keep it in mind and then best solution will come then anybody sees also that they will compare and say that yes this is the best solution like that so that is how everybody has to think and we have to promote actually mostly whenever i am going to colleges and all i am telling youngsters some people also instead of all of you going to the software and all these things some people also should take up these green jobs like no these are all like not office jobs actually green, these are all called green jobs i call no call them green jobs actually like skill council green skill council very good name they kept actually like that no we very good green jobs also available climate change so many jobs are available for very good engineers and like no scientific people so they should take up like so i'll tell some youngsters many times like this so that's all from my side uh, sing sab but mm-hmm. madam and others actually Yeah. So now, now I thank you very much. It was a wonderful presentation.
and the beauty of your presentation was that you have not just co covered one waste you have covered all wastes and you have shown us all technologies which have been developed in fact uh, i was remembering the yamuna river which gets the foams in the yamuna river sometimes you know uh, and that ammonical nitrogen if you say ammonical liquid waste is there and it creates a lot of foaming and which is very poisonous. Only what I, I think there's one question from Dr. Vanita Prasad before I start a dialogue with you and I want to ask you more. Uh, can you give the rights to Dr. Vanita Prasad? Uh, Rohit? Yeah. Sure, ma'am. Yeah. Dr. Prasad, if you are there, Dr. Vanita? Hello? Yeah. I gave I the rights. Yeah, Doctor. Yeah, please, Doctor. Doctor Vanita Prasad. She is also a name in itself in biogas technology. So yeah, yeah, I know her very well. Yeah, yeah. So she has a question which she please. Yeah, Dr. yeah. Prasad? She can tell. She can tell me no problem. Yeah. Doctor Prasad, are you there? Please unmute. You are, you have to mute, unmute. Pranit madam, I sent my video clip to uh, sing song. Yeah, yeah. If you want, yeah. I can see. Yeah. 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 That was great information. Uh, a lot of information and a lot of work done on the engineering aspect. Mm. So just wanted to have some tips uh, how we can able to really uh, work on field for these plants. That's what I actually want to understand because I was in the other meeting with ma'am where uh, some of the plant operators mentioned uh, uh, yes. Yes. a gap it's, for... It's good robot. you brought out this point, you know, I also wanted to I also wanted to ask him the same things that during the trainings we had a lot of questions. Yeah, please, please carry on. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that was the part actually, uh, a lot of uh, actual data from the field, if we can get it and we really can uh, solve those issues will help this sector to grow because a lot of things has been done on engineering side. Once, uh, I will say, hand in hand with the microbiology side or the biotechnology side, this will make a wonder. This will make a wonder. And uh, in next three to four years, uh, we might be having a energy surplus because a lot of Satat plants are about to come. So, sir, please. Yeah. yeah, there are two aspects for feed actually. Yes, if you are talking about organic fraction of MSW, as I told you, segregation is a big issue. I am telling you, in Hyderabad, we are generating 5,000 tons of organic fraction of MSW. And we are operating four plants each, like you know, three plants with 500 kg capacity, two plants with 10 tons capacity we are operating. And we are finding it sometimes difficult to get feed. Because the segregation is a big issue. Yes. So, in fact, a lot of I'm spending time, a lot of time in talking to the log that persons, market secretaries, and all the guys. So, make segregation methods, say, educate them like that. We are doing so much of groundwork, actually. Even though it is becoming very tough for me. So, it is a big, actually, I'm telling you, it is a big painful for the persons who are giving technology, putting plant, and the plants are not being operated because of lack of feed. It is a big problem. And uh, Another thing is that, you know, one more issue I found. For example, we touched several restaurants, uh, big, big star hotels in Hyderabad, who are generating around two tons, three tons, four tons, food waste, very good waste for biogas generation. I also given them offer saying that, no, we'll invest, put the plant, sell the biogas to you. For example, your uh, LPG is 100 rupees kg, give us only 8 rupees for us. And we'll keep on taking the take the biogas. Manual also will take it back and dispose it as per our convenience. Or we'll sell it. You give the waste some space and use the biogas. That model is also not doing. What they're telling, sir, some people are coming, these diary people, uh, this uh, piggery people, and they're taking uh, all the waste, sir. We are not wasting, having not any waste like that. But the truth is something different. That is not there. In the nights and all, they're dumping in some rivers, canals, and all these things. And when the uh, pollution metal becomes stringent, no, everybody mm -hmm. purchased these composters, high costly composters, high energy consumption. They kept like, like a showpiece in front of their hotels. Never they operated those composters. 
If they are perceived, if they are operating, okay, I'll be happy, but they never operated those compartments. So this mindset of the people has to be changed very drastically. Yeah. See, yeah. Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, a lot of changes have happened. Still, our mindset has to be changed. That is the about this sector, general society sector. But you know, for example, agriculture waste and other waste, you know, like press mud, agriculture waste, napkin, these are all like you know, organized sectors. You no, know, that is feed is not a problem. For example, any commercial plant, Satat program is coming. You know, when the feed is available, then only that person will install the plant. Punjab or whatever, wherever place. For example, we are now processing five clients. All of them have got very good feed. Press mud, they are having very good, approximately some two hundred tons. One person is growing in a hundred acres napkin grass. Another person is having actually. Approximately every day, forty tons to fifty tons of rice husk like that. So those are organized sectors. There is no problem, but unorganized sector still the segregation is a problem. And MSW Solid Waste Management 2016 should be promulgated very seriously. And in fact, actually, uh, indoor as I told you, case study that is the one city which they have done excellently well. And see, for at Plus Plant, I can say recently Tata Consulting Engineering has prepared a report uh, based on the like you no know, based on the request of uh, giz and the ministry of urban development government of india but they are saying that all these things society based biogas plants are 90% 8% not working because of some reason or other but most of the plants plant, this feed is not available so that is the report they have given actually madam also knows actually pravin ma parvan ma also may be knowing about that report actually recently i attended a meeting actually in something some hotel in delhi that is the state of affairs Yeah, yeah. Because so technology is one part. Secondly, waste making available plant is become very very critical actually. Mm. That is everybody listening. So this further, this urban local bodies further, they have to gear up, do this activity sincerely. Because everybody thinking what will happen if the waste is disposed like that. They think, but they are not. Nobody thinking about long term effects. When we mm. get plague and all, no, twenty years back in Sourat, I did learn plague and all these games, and suddenly people get alert and after that they will forget. So that is mm. unfortunate. One thing, madam, actually, mm. even uh, Parvin, madam, yeah. also would like no, to tell. Now, Parvin, ma'am, we 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 actually have to look into this matter. That's what we were talking. Mm. So, as as experts in this sector, we really have to look into this matter and try to sort it out uh, mm. as early as possible. So, ma'am, you please take it up as we discussed. Uh, if we can get this list of uh, plants which has been put up. And still not working, maybe because of feed, maybe because of another issues. Mm. We can handle it. Try and revive these plants. Mm. You send me a mail, please. I forgot. Uh, yeah. So, so, so that that what actually yeah, I was I, asking yeah. you. If yeah. you can send me some list, I can. I I, I I will I will compile yeah. and send to you. Yeah. Yeah, sir. I will be in touch with both of you. Uh, yeah. I had another meeting, so I will be leaving now. Yeah, please. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I will be in touch with both of you to make this yes. sector easy really grow. Yes. My Thank only, you. yeah, my question to you is, Doctor Rao, you have shown Sir. so much technologies for the liquid waste coming from the industrial waters. You know, the waste coming yes. and uh, yes. reducing the COD and reducing the ammonia. So, have you brought this technology to the notice of the Central Pollution Control Board? Because yeah, you know, we do. have done so many trainings in the CTPs in Delhi. and there we found training the workers was very good the technicians was very good we could get, formally you know tell them about the projects which they were doing or the material which they were handling but at the end of it the process itself should be you know it should be made better the process if you see i think the ctps when we went and visited or when we had the trainings that is the time they put them into motion otherwise they must be closed You know, so have you been in touch with the Centre Pollution Control no, Board? No, no, madam, but local pollution control boards. I am keeping interacting with them, like Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. I am keeping. So, do they honour the technologies which you have developed? Yeah, they are recommending it to the people. Industries also very, very actively participating. We are trying to see some break-even is required, madam. Any technology, you no. Know? First uh, one person has to take, then all others will take. Like you know, I told two thousand fourteen when biogas plant, no, nobody, no takers were there. So one Akshayvatra Foundation took it. And they we demonstrated the building happened. That is how replications happened actually. Mm. So first one like you know ice breaking is required. That is we are oh, trying, yeah. madam. We'll try our level best. And mm. uh, like you know, as I told you, I'll send mail to this CPCB people also. Yeah, I'm please. in touch with this regional uh, CPCB Chennai. So mm. I'll also contact them actually. Yeah. No, but you must be having those CTPs, those industrial effluent treatment plants. So like yeah. the guys, we had organized trainings in Delhi. 
you know the help the technicians yeah, yeah, were very yeah. benef much benefited out of it in fact it was the first classroom training they had ever had since yeah. they had jo joined jobs yeah. so if you are in touch with them you can direct them to us we have got training modules where we would like to give sure, them sure madam sure i'll definitely do it i'll definitely yeah, that do it. is yeah. that is one aspect of it because cpcb is not very receptive see there yes, were techno yeah the algal technologies or biological treatment you know some of the plants uh, effluent treatment plants wanted to put up but they said that they say it is you'll have to take all the approvals all the permissions again so that is very difficult if you take up some technology and then again you have to go to the rut of setting up the though neri has said that we will review the plants whatever they have set up in the ministry of environment and forest and they will see what upgradations can be made but if your inputs go to neri or if they go to cpcb maybe it can always help you know giz you said giz also is monitoring these plants and there were some you know there was some report also which i attended those workshops where they you know how they whether they want to continue this the monitoring and the operations you know what wherever role they have in these plants so i feel your contribution you know apart from what you are doing in the biomethanation biomethanation is very good you know you you can connect with five all the 5000 you know <laughs> the investors who are doing yeah. this and they will be very happy in fact i had an investor two the three days he had come to me looking for a technologist imagine he has the money he has the land and he was looking for a technologist for napier dust uh, yeah. you know technology so th this is the condition you know under satat lois have been issued but people have not connected properly with the technologists so that yeah. connect has to be made yeah correct yes yeah. yes so I, i i think the overall the presentation was very good and of course the uh, recognition oh. you got from uh, honorable prime minister that was yeah. also worth mentioning you know and it is a right approach he has what he has projected he has not picked it up just for the sake of picking it is something which can contribute as a decentralized solution so that is why it has been picked up so thank you very much you know and Ma'am, uh, one minute uh, uh, yes, mr yes. mr rakesh bhan uh, was yes, 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 yeah, on the chat can, uh, rohit can you uh, yeah can you give him talking rights to... yeah I gave the right one. Yeah, please. I didn't. Uh, sorry, I missed it. Yeah. Yeah. No, man. No issues. Rakesh Bhan. Uh... Mr. Rakesh Bhan. Uh, can you ask Mr. your question? If you have any question, kindly unmute yourself and ask. Uh, yeah. I think uh, sir is yes, not sir. there. Doctor yeah. Rao, good afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, sir. We have seen so technologies from kitchen, from um, home kitchen to the kitchen. But I want wanted to know: Has this technology be commercialized in any place in India? Whether the technology is has been proved and the technology is commercialized, and if yes. so. Yeah, yes, yes, sir. Which actually, for which know, organization sir. have commercialized the kitchen waste to kitchen LPG? Kitchen is not making. You can uh, scout Akshay Patra, Akshay Patra Foundation, sir. Akshay Patra Foundation. We have installed approximately twelve to fourteen plants. You can see for near to you, if you are in Delhi, there is a uh, Sri Krishna birthplace is there, sir. Brindavan. There is a one plant is working there. And shortly, one plant is coming in a Faridabad near Mata Murthy and Dasmati two tons per day plant. And there are fifteen plants working across India, sir. You can Google Lakshya Patra Foundation. You can call nearby place. They will show you. You can come to Hyderabad. I will show you. No problem. Here also, plant five plants are working. Okay. There. Yeah. Any other questions from audience? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. Single sided uh, clip. I have sent you e email clip that if you want to play, you can play now. Single sided. Yeah, like, Rohit, yeah. can you do? Yeah. Yo, so you. You can put as well, and if you can, you know, connect with all of them. Yeah. Whoever wants any information. So I think Dr. Santosh is also there. what is this speaker to carry out no no 
not that i separately just no i sent one film one small yeah. clip attachment attachment i sent mr santosh you, would you like to ask any question yeah mr uh, santosh welcome yeah 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 uh, we know i know doctor uh, gagan uh, yeah everybody knows everyone <laughs> yeah basically uh, we are exploring options to convert uh, uh, rice straw to biogas that's a good good sir good sir very good very good yeah, yeah. Uh, have you done any experiments on using yes sir yes sir yes sir like yes sir we did rice husk and rice straw both uh, and are you connected with one of the satat program with for rice straw anywhere in andhra tamil nadu uh, no satat program no over so over no sir but we are doing project with bpcl now we have completed this rice straw and rice husk and now okay. uh, they are looking for some investors to install the plant and we are negotiating next week we have you are, look, uh, you are doing it with which company i didn't get it bpcl 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 but yeah, hpcl yeah. is doing it in badaiyo they have already set, set up a plant on rice straw and in fact now we are doing the trainings for aggregation uh, from this month onwards we will be training the farmers in the aggregation of uh, you know this uh, agro residues and of course biomass depot operators also so that yeah, they can store yeah, it properly yeah yeah, yeah. people are there there are plants there are there are around 4 to 5 plants on agriculture waste yeah 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 so bpcl has no problem getting the rice straw ah uh, most of the places they have got arrangements with this feed arrangements madam there is no problem Okay, with Punjab, the FPOs. Punjab, Punjab, one of the biggest plant and agriculture waste is working. Thirty-two tons of. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, Rao, sir. One specific thing happens. Uh, there are technologies, but uh, these rice straw and these projects need to be absolutely economically viable cases. In the MSW food waste, there it can be subsidized somewhat because it's a different ball game for urban area. They have to manage waste. But when we go for rice straw waste CBG. then the thing has to be economically viable because then only investors would invest yeah. in the project and it is become very difficult for us to prove that it is economically viable have you the thing that you are working with is it a bankable thing or um, yeah, bankable solution sir offline you can connect with me you can write down my number the, you can take a number from my number from uh, singsa pb singsa and you can call me and explain your different details you can have a discussion i think sir okay okay yeah, yeah. i think I'll the numbers know. are displayed here either yeah, you numbers can numbers are here you can take the number sir my yeah. numbers are here right hmm. you can is not in the chat box roy we should be in the, you can put it in the chat box hmm? okay madam can we yeah. finish it yeah. up yeah yeah thank Rohit. you thank you Rohit. thank you very much i'll just Uh, it was a wonderful presentation and i'll just ask mr pb singh to formally thank you thank you very much and thank you all thank you thank you madam thank you uh thank so you can i run uh, the video or we uh, are over uh, please please run sure sir. the two invited are remaining okay uh, uh, is this audible uh, no yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. okay yeah. okay uh the pb singh we can't hear you yeah ma'am hello yes hello issue is that i know i know but is this not audible sir no no not not audible so आवाज आ रहा है your one email is also received for kuch dikhai nahi de raha rohit so i will i will align the same and uh, mr pb singh please conduct the are you okay i will yes. align the same on monday i don't know why it is not audible because it is audible from my end sir uh, i can rohit. listen to you i can listen to you yes yes rohit ye screen hata do yahan se so files to khola hai okay anyway uh thank you very much sir uh, for the excellent presentation uh, sir you explain in very well and very details hope all the audience get knowledge and benefited uh, with this uh, presentation uh, once again thank you very much sir
for a very informative presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would uh, like to thank all the participants for his valuable time. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a, have Thank a you, day. sir. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you.